Okay, guys, welcome. Um, today I want to show you how to set up a cutting diagram using AutoCAD. Uh, earlier this week, we went through uh, measuring a technical drawing. You know, this was a big joint house layout drawing, and it was drawn at a half scale where one unit on this page equals uh, two units in the real um, the real world in terms of what you are building. And I asked you uh, to measure each of these parts and uh, diagram or write out in the table over here uh, what those sizes are. So you have those measurements when you build your actual big joint house. These are those sizes. We're using three quarter inch stock. So every rectangle is three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, and the real true sizes for each part is out here. You're going to need these for your parts layout. So make sure you have your measurements or you're able to reference this table. And, um, and we're going to move forward here in uh, setting ourselves up for uh, AutoCAD. Okay, now before you begin, let's make sure you have a file structure set up for this class. On your desktop, you want to create a folder called Engineering. In order to do that, you right-click on your mouse uh, and come down here to New, get a folder, and go ahead and name that folder Engineering. Okay, um, in Engineering, we're going to create a folder for this project. Right click in there, create a folder new, uh, give that a name. We're going to call that, I'm called mine Big Joint, okay? Big Joint House, um, whatever you need to know that it's for this project. And then all of my CAD files for Big Joint House are going to be put in here. So this file, size A title block, uh, is something that we need to get. Um, I have this uh, out on Canvas. Uh, many of you already this week have downloaded it from the TechEd server, from the, the Q drive. But we need to get this file and we need to save it to our local computer. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So to locate the size A title block uh, file, I do have it here available with a link, but it's actually in this page right here, uh, Getting Started with AutoCAD. So if you click on Getting Started with AutoCAD, there is a link to the size A title block. You click on this link and you should be able to download that file um, and save that file when you, you click download, save that file to your uh, desktop location. So it's gonna prompt you to save this. You need to navigate to your desktop, navigate to engineering, navigate to big joint, and this is where you're gonna save. Save, click save to save the size A title block. So go ahead and do that, make sure you have that. Before we even start CAD, we wanna make sure we have uh, the file the template that we're going to be using uh, as this has layers built up for it. So you get that from Canvas. Now, the rest of this uh, tutorial is going to assume that you watched uh, some of the tutorial videos on AutoCAD. Uh, these are the Intro to CAD um, videos that we use uh, across the hall. And um, anybody who has taken the Intro to CAD have seen these. These are uh, Mr. Lucharowitz's Getting Started videos for AutoCAD. Both of these locations can uh, give you a, a good run in um, and all the necessary skills you need to be successful for the Big Joint House project. So make sure you take a look at these two uh, pages here and uh, watch some of the videos um, getting in there. My main focus right now is to give you what you need to get this assignment turned in by Friday of this week. So the house cutting plan is uh, what our principal focus is. So let's get out of uh, canvas here for a moment and let's actually launch the CAD application on your desktop you're going to have the big letter A um, and if you do not you want to do a search for AutoCAD 2020 so we're going to launch the big letter A um, it might take a little while to load this up as this is loading up uh, it's going to load a bunch of tool palettes and plugins and things like that um, in the end there is a license that you do need to agree to uh, as the school license is going to load onto your computer so if it's your first time launching AutoCAD, it may take a little bit uh, to run the program. And even after you've launched it, I've run it many times, and you can see uh, it's taken uh, several minutes to, or to uh, boot itself here. We're going to open files, and uh, you're gonna to navigate to that size A title block that you saved. So uh, up in here, go to desktop, and uh, locate that size A title block. So you, you're gonna find your desktop PC, and then on here should be your folder engineering um, into your big joint and your size A title block. Select that. 
Now I already have it uh, in use. You might get that as a read only warning. Um, and that's, that's fine if, if that's what you get as a read only warning, because we'll end up saving this back. Um, in class, I have shown people how to update the drawing title and uh, the, the, the date and um, scale information, things like that. There's another video that goes into some more specifics about how to set your drawing up for printing. I'm not going to spend time with this. And instead, I'm going to have you go to the model space, who's our main focus here, is just to draw some rectangles. So let's go to model space. If we click on this tab over here on the side that says model, Go ahead and, okay, so again, we're clicking on the tab that says uh, model there, and we're going to move over to the model space. I'm going to do this without uh, changing my video. Um, here I am. I'm on the model space. Uh, in the size A title block, I've already built some layers in here. We'll talk about these later on, but I'm going to click on this drop down. We'll come down to object viz, and I'm going to draw in an object visible layer. I need to make two 16 and a half by three quarter inch rectangles. They're going to represent my wooden stock, the pine that I'm, I'm working with. Okay, I can do this two ways. I can use the line command. So I come up here, choose line, click out of my screen and draw a line that is 16. So just type in 16.5. And then I'm going to um, bring my mouse in a positive direction, upward direction. Uh, don't click, don't do anything else. We're going to type the distance of 0.75 or 3 slash 4. 0.75. Okay, and then coming back in the opposite direction, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Back in the opposite direction, you can type 16 and a half again. 16.5. Okay, I'm going to mouse out just so I can see the end of it there. And now I'm going to finish this off. By if you see, I'm extending down, and when it reaches the endpoint, it's going to kind of lock in with a little square there. We're going to lock to that endpoint. It wants to keep drawing, so I need to hit the ESC escape command, and I have one rectangle. Okay, you have one rectangle to get started. If you like, you can simply select that rectangle, use the copy command, and pick a point on there, move it up, and you now have two rectangles. I want to show you another way of drawing a rectangle. We're going to use the actual rectangle command up here, and, and we're going to draw that. So take the rectangle command, click out on the screen, anywhere on the screen, pull out, and you see it's giving you dimensions. So we're going to type 16.5. Now do not hit enter. Instead, hit tab, and it allows me to change the other number over there. So this number, we want to be 0.75. 75. That's a fast way of drawing a rectangle. Okay, and there's my rectangle. I can then copy that. So this time I'm going to use a green selection. Green selection to pull up. Anything it touches gets selected. We're going to copy the base point and we pull down. Just read your command prompts as it's prompting you, asking you what do you want to do. And I can, you can see, I can keep copying these down uh, as many as I need. Okay, well, we only need two of them. From these rectangles, we are now uh, free to figure out where are parts going to go. So that's the next step, figure out where your parts are going to go. Okay, before we continue, I want to make sure that you have some settings uh, that are matched up with my settings, uh, just so uh, things do the same thing on your computer. First of all, uh, down here on the, the uh, bottom, I, I have uh, uh, important two important things that I'd like you to have turned on. I'd like you to have polar tracking turned on. So that's this circle with a kind of an angle in it. Uh, right next to it, there's a little drop down. Let's set your polar tracking so that uh, we are tracking 45 uh, degree increments. That's 45, 90, 135, 180, et cetera. So make sure your polar tracking is set to 45 degree increments, that little check mark right there, and it should be light blue and turned on here. Uh, the other um, snap setting I want you to uh, have turned on is, is uh, our object snap over here, and let's click the little drop down next to object snap. We want to make sure we have these object snaps checked, end, end point, midpoint, center, geometric center, intersection, and extension. Although you won't need all of them for this assignment, um, I do like to have those uh, on, and, and your uh, screen will match my screen um, as I go through this, this demonstration. Um, again, that needs to be light blue. Um, Right next to object snap uh, are the object tracking, snap tracking lines, uh, projection line, and uh, 
that shows a reference line or little extensions. And so I like to have those turned on as well. You may not have this line weight display. Um, line weight display just shows the uh, thickness of the line uh, weight on the layer that it was drawn on. In order to get this here, if you like to have this, uh, if you prefer to draw this with the line weight off, um, you want to control that. Come over here under customization. It's very far uh, right side. Click on that and put a check mark next to line weight. That will drop uh, this line weight icon down here next to the annotation icon. And uh, then you can control your line weight. So I'm going to leave mine on because it's easier to see that way. Make sure you have these settings uh, in place uh, so your screen behaves the way my screens. So as we get started here, we're going to draw a four inch part. Let's grab the line tool. I click on the line tool and I'm going to mouse down to um, a, a corner of my uh, part here. So line tool, mouse to the corner, and I get this little green uh, snap. It snaps to the end point. I'm not clicking. I'm just mousing over. Okay, when I mouse over an endpoint, it, it snaps. So got that endpoint uh, snap. I'm not clicking again. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to do an endpoint extension. In other words, I'm going to use that endpoint and measure from that endpoint. So I pull my mouse out, and you see this little green dotted uh, line, and the word extension is there. I'm going to extend four inches away from the endpoint. So I'm going to type the number four. I'll hit enter, and what that does is it puts my cursor four inches away from that part. That allows me to draw my first four inch. So I, I come up and I click at the top and I hit escape. There's my four inch part right there. Um, so I'm gonna label that. Let's get uh, the text tool out here. Um, my four inch part is uh, part E, so I just click on the screen, pull out a little bit, uh, click there, and we're gonna type the letter E, and there's my part labeled. Now my next part, uh, let's put part F in. That is the uh, partner uh, piece to this. Also four inches. But before I do that, don't forget to account for the saw curve. When you cut this, you are removing some material. You're removing, uh, my thickest saw removes an eighth of the material. The band saw, a uh, sixteenth of the material. Uh, some of the hand miter saws, about a sixteenth of material. So we got to account for those uh, cuts that we're, we're making. I'm going to use this nifty tool called offset up here. I click on offset, and it says specify your offset distance. Let's type in one uh, eighth of an inch, or one slash eight. You can also use the decimal point, one, two, five. Type that in there, hit enter, and then it says select the object, the offset. Well, I want to offset that line I drew. So I click on that, and I pull this way, because that's where my saw is going to go. So I pull in this direction, and it draws a, or mirrors another line right there. So this is my wasteland. This part doesn't count in my measuring. This part allows me to start the, the new projection. Then I hit escape, get out of that command, and I could reset offset and do another four inch part, or as we did before, we can do an extension. So I take line, okay, and then I extend out, okay, from that, that endpoint. We're gonna do um, an extension from that endpoint. Whoops, wrong endpoint. Extension from this end, make sure I got line up. Uh, <laughs> extension from this endpoint. We're going to extend out a distance of four, okay, and it puts me four inches away. Again, I could use offset, which is what I'd usually have done, made it a lot easier. So there's my second part. Let's label that, place some text there, click on the screen, click, type the letter F, okay, so parts E and F are labeled on here. Let's say I want to do part B. Part B is uh, one of the rooftop parts. It's the longer rooftop part. Um, so... I want to plan for uh, part B. We'll do our offset again, just so we have our saw curve by 0.125, enter. What am I offsetting? I'm offsetting this, that way, okay? And um, now hit escape, ESC. Okay, I'm gonna use line again. From this endpoint, do an extension. We're gonna type the number five, okay? Now, this is five inches away from that intersection. Five inches is the outside mark. So you see how you get my angle projections here. I want to have this angled back at 45 degrees. So I want to make sure those green extensions are in there. It's a 135, so click there. There's my uh, angled extension for uh, part E. Now, figure out, do you have enough left over here uh, to do part A? So part B is here.